All right, so now we moving back to the NFL because you know NFL, you know we love it, National Football League. Holla at your boy, and we're gonna talk about you know the week three action coming down. We we got a, we we got some barn burners on here. We got Colts and Titans. We got Chargers and Chiefs, and we got the Bucks and Rams Sunday night. We got Packers and 49ers. I'm not even gonna mention Monday night because you know how we feel about the NFC lease. But with that yeah. said, Jay. What's the other action you see on the horizon this weekend? I think the big headliner is uh, the Bucks and Rams in the 425 window. Pretty sure that game will be on Fox. Um, that I mean, looking ahead, that's a game that I think we, I think we both might have both of those teams in a NFC Championship game. So maybe an early mm-hmm. season preview. Uh, Tampa Bay on the road, you know, they're the defending champs. We get all that, but the Rams, Rams would look pretty impressive. Uh, thus far, Matthew Stafford looking quite comfortable um, in that Sean McVay offense. You know, you got Daryl Henderson out there. He's doing a fairly good job for them running the football. Cooper Cup's putting up great numbers. You got, uh, you, you still got Robert Woods. You got Van Jefferson. Deshaun Jackson, he he might be in there. I don't know. He might already tweak something. But we, and then, you know, defensively, we know what they do with Aaron Donald and company. You know, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. I think, uh, I think the big thing I'll be looking out for is like Tampa Bay got, you know, so many weapons that they can throw out on the field. And I know the the, the Rams got Jalen Ramsey. We get that. He can't cover everybody, though. So it's going to be up to, you know, some of these other guys, you know, out there in that secondary and in the linebacking core, you know, to be able to handle, you know, depending on how the Rams uh, set it up on defense, you know, Whoever Jalen Ramsey isn't covering, whether it's Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, and then don't forget Gronk, it's going to be hard to he's, – he's had a very nice start to the season as well. So I, that, that's what I'm looking at in that game. Do the Rams got enough pieces on the back end to, you know, deal with the Bucks in the, uh, in the pass game? And also, to, conversely, can the Rams get some heat, you know, on Tom Brady? The Bucks' offensive line, they – They've been pretty good. They was very good last year. I thought, uh, you know, Tristan Wirfs came in, had immediate impact. Donovan Smith wasn't embarrassing himself. And they pretty stout in the middle with, uh, was it Kappa, Jensen, and Marpet, I believe. They pretty solid. Uh, so I think that's the headlining game. That's what I'm looking for. I think the other 425 game on Fox is going to be somewhat interesting. You got Seattle and Minnesota. Um, Seattle a pretty disappointing loss last week. I mean, they had a they had a nice lead at home against Tennessee, and then next thing you know, Derrick Henry puts on the crown, and here he comes. He's just running through everybody all the way to overtime. And you know, the reason why I'm looking at this game for Seattle is, you know, it ain't gonna get no easier for the run defense because you're gonna have to deal with the you're gonna have to deal with Dalvin Cook, and we know how much uh, we know how big time he can be. So, mm-hmm. you know, these are two teams that. You know, I know it's early and I know Seattle, you know, it's not desperate. It's not time to get desperate for them at one and one. But Minnesota, you got to think they're going to play with some type of intensity. They let one get away last week. They had a field goal opportunity that they missed. They could have beat Arizona. Um, instead, they're owing to that. You know, you can't, you know, I know Green Bay hasn't looked, you know, lights out so far, but you don't want to get too, too far behind those guys. So I think that's a compelling game because of how you know desperate Minnesota should be, and the trouble Seattle had last week stopping Derrick Henry. I think they're gonna have some trouble with Dalvin Cook. Elsewhere, I think, I think New Orleans and New England is gonna be real interesting. Um, I think the Saints probably the better team, but in a matchup like this, you know, I'm looking at Jameis Winston going up against Bill Belichick. I think that spells trouble. The the, the Patriots are you know really talented on the back end. Um, they can confuse. They can confuse a lot of guys. Zach Wilson had a a horrible time with that defense last week, and you know as good as Jameis Winston was in Week One, he took a step back in Week Two against Carolina. So we'll have to see how that goes. I'm probably leaning New England in that game just because you know Bill Belichick and Foxborough. I think they're gonna throw some things that he's not ready for. Um, but outside of that, you know, I think it's a pretty it's a pretty solid week. There ain't too many duds out there, so. Uh, I think we in for week three is going to be a good one. Yeah, man, I'm with you. Week three seems like it's going to be what we like to call a, a barn burner. Um, and and it, for all my WWE fans that know who Jim Ross is, it looks like we're going to have a slobber knocker in here. Um, 
But the first game I'm going to talk about, hey, the, the Colts going down to visit Tennessee Titans. You just brought up the Titans. Uh, wonderful uh, come-behind win against Seattle last week. Um, now we want to see if they can do that within the division. And then we, you know what we got going on with the Colts. Um, we want to know if Carson Wentz, body ever going to allow him to do what he need to do as far as, you know, coming and, and being a – listen, Carson Wentz, man, listen. I feel bad because you left Philly on a sour note because you couldn't stay healthy. Then you show up to the Colts with a second chance and you can't stay healthy. Listen, I don't know, man. This keeps me in the trend. I don't know how long we see Carson Wentz. He needs to get it together, uh, wrap up them, them sore ankles. He needs to come out here and show the Colts fans what why in the hell um, Frank Wright decided to trade for him. Because... Right now, this look like a failed investment. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, this look like the Colts invested in a cryptocurrency that was made in somebody's backyard and now they're out of business. Like, this is not it. <laughs> this is just not it. Um, so, Carson Wentz, you, you need to, um, you know what I'm saying, help the Colts out here. Um, and then the next game, I want to jump into the Chargers and Chiefs um, because, listen, we, we, we talked about it earlier in the NBA segment. You know, this is an offensive league. I got it. And you got two guys that seem to be – well, we know what Patrick Mahomes let, let me not put him in – him in, um the, the, the young kid um, for the Chargers and the, Justin Herbert in the same situation. However, Justin Herbert seemed to be the goods. Last year he was the rookie of the year. This year he seemed to be picking up where he left off. Probably not as crisp as he was last year, but he do got a new head coach which I said they should have might have left the old head coach there for this reason. But the Chargers still going. They, they still starting off. They still looking good. We seen what the Chiefs defense did, um, you know, in their previous game, which this is a more complete team. He's a better passer. I, I would like to see how they go. Um, Patrick Mahomes coming back, you know, they just, you know, lost that game. Uh, wonderful game to Baltimore, I should add. They're going to come out here and try to prove a point. We know what that Chargers defense is about, so I think this is going to be a fantastic game. And then the next game, um, we got the Bengals and the Steelers. Here's the deal. The reason I'm so intrigued into this Steelers game is I want to know who's going to be the quarterback since Big Ben hurt his pec muscle because Big Ben been flopping around here for the last five years, and Mike Tomlin and, and, and the GM never thought, hey, let's go draft his heir apparent because this dude don't want to work out on the, in the offseason. He don't want to make himself any better. He just want to rely on the fact that he's Big Ben. So let's go draft another quarterback. And they did, They have not done that. The Josh Dobbs of the worlds that was there, that ain't going to cut it. Mason Rudolph, we only know him because he got slapped with a helmet. That ain't going to cut it. Um, uh, Dwayne Haskins, yo, you got cut from a team that can't even come up with a proper logo. That ain't going to cut it. So... With those, if that's your options, I'm, I, I would like to know what the Steelers going to do about quarterback. And if they go out here and lose to the Bengals, with, they throw up the smoke signals because it's, it's about to be something. It is about to be some, some, some drama down there in Pittsburgh. Let me just tell you, in the Steel City. And then um, I think you covered the 4 o'clock window pretty good, so I'm going to skip on down and, um, to Sunday night football. Green Bay Packers and the um, San Francisco 49ers. You know, this is always a classic. Can can the Packers finally show that they got some backbone against the 49ers? That is why I'm watching this game. Because the, the last about four times I done watched them play, the 49ers have just ran all types of rough shot over the Packers on both lines of scrimmage. Yeah. Now, the Packers seem to be the better team of the two this season. Let's see. Let's see. I just want to see if the Packers are going to come in here with that Charmin tissue that they showed us in week one, or they're going to come in here with that two-ply special that we seen last Monday night. So, um, outside of that, man, th those are the games that got me excited for Sunday. 